So the power for clean mobility still often comes from coal or gas power plants that pump CO2 into the atmosphere of our overheating planet. Or it comes from conventional nuclear reactors splitting atoms and creating huge radioactive pollution problems. Sustainable technologies have a drawback. They're erratic because the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. To truly achieve green mobility, we need clean power plants providing a steady supply of energy all day and all night. Could nuclear fusion be the answer? It's the power that drives the sun, the primeval force that makes life as we know it possible. But can we harness it on Earth? We've come to an industrial park outside Oxford in England to talk with a fusion technology company and find out whether it's going to start making a difference in sectors like transport anytime soon. First Light Fusion is taking a pioneering approach to solve the energy riddle. At its core is a huge machine that fires a projectile at a target so fast that it initiates a fusion reaction. It produces uh, a very dense, uh, very high temperature state of matter which, which fuses and delivers a, a pulse of fusion energy. Fusion, you're joining together uh, light elements like hydrogen um, and so what you have is two types of hydrogen they come together, they join, fuse and they produce uh, helium and that process releases energy. Fusion is basically the, the opposite of conventional nuclear. So in, in nuclear power you're splitting a heavy element and that releases energy but you end up with the, the, the products afterwards which are, can be quite hard to handle. We're moving towards a world where uh, the demand for energy is going to increase very, very rapidly. And, and obviously we have uh, uh, renewables which have been deployed at a very, very high pace. The maximum um, that uh, we can get to with solar and wind is about 50% of total electricity production. There's a gap. Um, there is not a, a, a green, zero carbon technology at the minute that can fill that gap. We should continue to deploy uh, renewables energy at the fastest possible rate, but at the same time we are in desperate need of a, of a new form of clean base load and, and fusion is definitely a, a very, very good candidate for that. The big challenge in making fusion commercially viable is to get more energy out of the system than you have to put into it to make fusion happen. The best known attempt to do that so far is the international project ITER. This giant experimental fusion reactor being built in southern France is based on what's called a tarkamac, a giant donut filled with superheated hydrogen plasma that flows through it like a ring of lightning held in place by powerful magnets. ITER is slated to produce its first experiment results by the mid-2020s. It's one of a number of mega-scale fusion projects around the world. First Light Fusion in Oxford has opted for a smaller scale. Our approach is completely different from the, the approach of, for example, the ITER projects. We call our approach projectile fusion. Interestingly, a small marine animal provided some of the inspiration for the first light fusion approach. The pistol shrimp is an amazing crustacean, which has an oversized claw. And when it clicks that claw, it, it, it cavitates the water, so it creates a bubble of air, and the shock wave it, it generates actually collapses that bubble of, of, of air, and with that it can stun its prey. We found a way to mathematically model what the pistol shrimp does, and that inspired uh, us for our fusion technology. We fire a high-velocity projectile that flies for a short distance and then it hits into what we call the target. And the target is, is very complicated and sophisticated. Uh, it has to focus some of the energy of the projectile into the hydrogen. In a power plant, uh, each target will release the same amount of energy as a barrel of oil. That's how energy dense fusion is. In other words, there's potentially around 1,700 kilowatt hours of energy packed into a cube like this. 
That's enough to power your average electric car for about 8,500 kilometers. If we want for uh, mobility to be truly green, uh, the energy generated uh, at the source has to be green. So I believe that having a, a, a clean base load technology as Fusion promises to be, uh, will be very, very important to sustain the deployment of electric cars. So when can we look forward to clean, miniature Fusion units powering our cars and other forms of transport? To have a fusion-powered car would be, would be very, very challenging. But it's not impossible, but it's very difficult to see how you get a, a fusion-powered car. Actually, a fusion-powered car is a battery-powered car, right? You just have a fusion power plant on the grid. Ship, on the other hand, is uh, perhaps more interesting because the, the very biggest ships need about 100 megawatts of power, and that's, that's not a small power plant. That's actually quite a big power plant. So for the very biggest oil tankers, or for, perhaps for aircraft carriers, that might be possible. So cars aren't going to be packing their own little miniature reactors anytime soon, but what about other forms of transport like rockets? A fusion engine uh, powering a spacecraft, it's, it's obviously a, a sort of an amazing idea, especially for science fiction writers, because it's, it's, it's the thing of fusion, right? It's, it's, uh, it's this inexhaustible sort of source of energy, so it looks like ideal. Uh, problem is that physics says that uh, fusion gets easier the bigger it is, and, and, and so the spacecraft would have to be considerably sizable to take advantage of fusion technology. So fusion needs to take place in big power plants. Isn't that a bit scary? Fusion is, is not a, a, a chain reaction. Uh, so there's no possibility for it to, to run away, which is what causes meltdown. With conventional nuclear, you have to put an enormous amount of effort for the reaction to not run away. With fusion, you have to put an enormous amount of effort for the, for the reaction to actually continue. Meltdown is, is, is fundamentally impossible with fusion. There's also no weapons-grade material, and there's no long-lived radioactive waste. Um, so it is, it is substantially safer than the nuclear power. Fusion energy may be clean, green, and safe, but without a major research breakthrough, it could be decades before it can power a mobility revolution. So if you really want a fusion-driven car, the only way to get it anytime soon is straight from the source, through a solar array absorbing energy from that huge fusion power plant, the sun. <laughs>